Life is motion, death is rest, each is fulcrum of the other. There is no death in nature, save man's belief in death. God's magnetic light is eternal life. God's thinking is eternal life in action, divided by rest. Life in matter is but a pulsing simulation of eternal life in God, the One. That which man thinks of as a magnetic force is spiritual light of mind and not a physical working force of creation. Likewise, we hear constant references to negative electricity, negative charge, and negatively charged particles, which are as impossible in nature as silent sound is impossible. God's thinking is universal. His actions spring from His thinking, therefore God's actions are universal. Thoughts do not take place just here or there where they begin. They are everywhere, and their beginning and ending are one. Actions, likewise, are as omnipresent as their source in mind thinking. That which happens anywhere happens everywhere in this universe of naught but mind extension. Idea has no extension, but idea, divided by imagining, extends into an imaged infinity and repeats its divisions like unto the infinity which the kaleidoscope repeats and multiplies its imaginings as it repeats. When God thinks at any one point of rest in his universe, that point becomes the center of an invisible cube of white magnetic light. From there, it is harmonically repeated as cube centers throughout his cosmic kaleidoscope at the rate of several hundred billions of cyclic pulsations every second. Their speed of extension into this three-dimensional illusion is about 186,400 miles per second. Radical expansion of beginning points compress motion into cube planes of rest and space. These are reflecting mirrors of magnetic light which project God's thought-imaged forms onto his universal screen of space to simulate a reality of existence where not anything is, not even the motion which so convincingly seems to be there. Invisible cubes of magnetic light and of zero curvature are the boundings of wave fields within which the curved universe of reflected spherical forms are projected to constitute this electric thought wave universe of complex illusion. God begins each electric thought wave at a point of his white light at the intersection of the three inner planes of the cube, which are at right angles to each other. This point of beginning is the wave fulcrum. It is also the point of idea conception in mind. It is the centering eye of the inert gas of the elements which springs from that plane. It is likewise the cathode center of man's electric current and the beginning of the wave shaft which extends two ways to divide the red half of the spectrum from the blue to create separated father and mother bodies here also is where time and all other dimensions begin, as well as all other effects such as life, compression, polarization, and heat. Here also is where all depolarizing dimensions and effects end and disappear into invisibility, silence, and cold stillness of space. Every polarized action-reaction counts up to nine, never more, never less. The wave octave formula for the elements of matter and the color spectrum is nine, being eight centered by zero as follows. The total count of equators is nine. The eight corners of the cube and its centering zero equal nine. The eight sections of the divided cube centered by zero are also nine. The zeros upon each of the nine equators total nine, being eight centered by zero. God's magnetic cube is three multiplied by three. Its planes of zero curvature are nine, and its boundary angles are the eight corners and the centering one of the fulcrum source. Cube wave fields are the nine mirrors of magnetic light which project dimension and condition forms to all the universe from one wave field to another throughout all creation. 
In this manner, God's curved universe of curved directions and curved cellular forms appear upon his cosmic screen for an interval to simulate the many and the complex, and then disappear into his oneness to rest for an interval between thought pulsation frequencies. Thus, the cube, which is the oneness of all form, is imaged as the sphere in God's imaged universe. The cube and the sphere are one. The sphere is an incandescent cube, and the cube is a frozen sphere. The planes of the cube are nine, and their projections into the spectrum of the incandescent sphere are nine. The invisible universe is an absolute control of the visible. The invisible universe dominates and controls all motion by magnetic division into cube wave fields of zero curvature, beyond which no moving thing can pass. It can, however, repeat itself in neighboring wave fields, but always in reverse, as mirrors reverse. The geometry of the zero universe is based upon the cube and cube sections. Their planes are of zero curvature, and they reflect their forms and matter in crystal structures, which are the only forms of zero curvature in nature. All motion in all the electric universe is curved. The curved universe of matured form is based upon the sphere. The sphere is a compressed cube. The sphere is a series of true circles no matter where it may be divided into sections by cutting through it in one plane anywhere. All motion is equally compressed in respect to gravity. Therefore, all motion is in true gravity-centered circles, which multiply into spheres and again divide into true circles. The source of energy which creates true circles is at their very center. The source of all energy is the Creator. All motion of every nature, whether of thought or action, spins in true circular control around the omnipotent creator of that motion, and in planes of 90 degrees from a shaft of any extension of motion. Gravity controls the moving universe, but man has never known, nor even suspected, that his own immortality and gravity are one in their centering of his sensed body. Nor has he ever known that gravity extends to a shaft as his body extends from thought ring planes to mass, and as equators divide to become pairs and unite to lose their division. These things man must know together with the omnipresence of gravity which but seems to the senses to extend into shafts made up of many points, which are all one. When man overcomes this illusion of the senses, he likewise outgrows the possibility of forming sensed conclusions, such as the nuclear theory of the atom, which violates all principle of this electric universe which nature is. That which cannot be sensed in invisible space is yet to be dynamically known. The mystery of the crystal and its cleavages which divides crystals into units lies within the knowledge of space geometry, which can be scientifically organized into mind visibility as bodies in motion can be scientifically organized into sense visibility. There is nothing in nature which the senses can feel that the mind cannot know. The great mystery of all of the mysteries of matter lies hidden within the inert gases of the wave. The nature and structure of these keys to motion has never been known. It is time that they must be known.